again it's Cliff here from Down Under. Um, this video is going to be about lubrication and some practical steps you can take to help maintain the accuracy of your machinery asset. Cheers. The trouble with a single shot lubrication system, whether it's manual or electrical, is that the oil tends to run out the easiest outlet and that'll generally be somewhere low down in the system and um, if, if I've dismantled these machines and I know for a fact that some of the oil outlets um, are very free-flowing and others are not. Add to that the fact that over time the way oil starts to block up and become congested and the little metering valves in the system also become blocked up, blocked up and congested it's probably more realistic to accept the fact that uh, you, you may not be getting a good application of oil to those critical upper Z surfaces and ball screw and it's better as a safety precaution to additionally add a little uh, manually apply a little bit of lubricating oil in that area. Most machine tool lubrication systems use oil pressure from one pump source and it is then metered to all the various um, application points and it's very difficult to get an even flow to all those points over over the years the uh, lubricating oil can gum up and uh, gravity can come into play and, and various blockages and leakages will, will usually affect it long term and you won't get an even application but he, here I've tried to overcome that by having a manifold block so that the uh, different areas of the machine can be selected and the oil pressure point or the pump of the oil is putting all of its resources into one selected area and that way is much more likely that you will get uh, good lubrication to all the various selected parts of the machine and it, and it won't suffer from uh, a gradual decline in the application of oil but unfortunately most machine tools um, do suffer from that. Toolmart do a very helpful maintenance document for uh, maintaining your lubrication system called Flushing the Lubrication. I think it is. It's document SB0031. Um, and they've got a good uh, drawings and information on what can go wrong with your lubrication system and how you can uh, flush it out and get it working again. And if you have the time, it's really worth doing it. Um, you can see here, they show on the drawing, these little orifices that screw into the circuit and they restrict the flow down. The idea of having these little orifices that throttle off the flow is that if you get one area that has too much flow, you know, if, if a fittings come off or there's too big a gap or something, um, it can only leak out of there at a certain rate and so the, the rest of the system can still sort of limp along so that's a good design feature um, but, the, but the downside of these little orifices is that they can block up with uh, the way oil as it becomes gummy or little bits of debris in the system and they talk here about how you can flush it out with a solvent like WD-40 drain out as much oil as you can, put the solvent in the uh, pump, pump it through, that will help to dissolve the gum out of the system and that may well get your system going again or get it going a lot better again. This document explains the sort of things that can go wrong, you know if you've got a manual pump um, you pull the handle out and the spring tries to force oil through the system and if the handle go, goes back in too quickly then obviously you've got a leak in the system and the oil is gushing out in one area too quickly um, and if the handle stays out for too long a period uh, then you could have a, a likely to have some blockages in the system and um, that's an indication that you've got that problem um, so uh, it's worth if you have the time, the best thing you can do is to maintain your one-shot oiler system or, or your electrical pump oiler system so that you're getting oil dosed into the internals of the wearing parts where it really needs it. And putting oil on 
externally, manually, supplementary oiling is uh, better than nothing, but it isn't the optimum way to lubricate a machine. It's a really good idea to inspect your slideways from time to time. You know, have a look underneath um, and um, see where the oil is getting. You can see under here, this area is getting a good, a good dosing of oil. Um, and the other side too. And the screw is getting a good dosing of oil see it there so that's okay it's difficult to see whether the dovetail slides are getting a good dosing of oil because it's not so likely to hang on there um, but you could probably hope that it's getting a good dose there um, not quite so easy on the y-axis because you need to remove the covers to see whether it's getting a good dose of oil there um, but it's worth doing it from time to time just to keep a track on um, how well lubricated your machine is. Um, if you're going to have problems, it's probably most likely it's going to be on the Z uh, because you've got an additional uh, distance and uh, gravity coming into the equation. You can get a bit of an idea as to whether the Y surfaces are getting uh, lubrication um, but just by having a look at a certain area, I'll see if I can show you. So let's have a look down underneath, just trying to shine the torch in there. So if you look at that join line, that sliding surface join line there, get the light shining in it. It's a bit difficult to see there, but if I visually inspect it, I can see it's pretty slick with oil, and that's the Y slide, and the same on the other side. You can see that there's quite a bit of oil coming out there in that area. So that's a sign that at least some of the Y surfaces are getting good lubrication. And uh, just keep an eye on it and make sure that nothing's running dry. Because if you've got a slideway running dry without oil, it will wear really rapidly. Okay, let's have a look at this key area. Trying to hold the torch in the camera in one hand. Key area of the Z vertical slide. You see the short section of 45 degree approximately slide and then the big flat section and the same on the other side. And this is the top of the slide of the moving part of the head. This is a key area. You don't want to get that dirty with chips or swarth and um, or dust or dirt and it needs to be clean and well lubricated but see the back edge how it's chamfered that's not a good situation because that can harbor little bits of dirt and chips in there and it's really important that that area is in good condition and well lubricated so I've just taken the oil line off for a minute so you can clearly see that so if you can apply oil to that those two surfaces on both side sides and onto the ball screw, you're going to, on the top surfaces, you're going to ensure that with gravity, the oil will work its way down through those slides and the screw and flush out dirt and keep it lubricated. So you can apply that with a, uh, an extended tip on your oil can. If you chamfer it away like that, it'll drip right at the point, and then you can reach in here and feel it clicking on the ball screw and apply it to the ball screw and that's the most important part of the machine to lubricate because that's a highly loaded part of the vertical slide and you can be least of all sure that it is getting lubricated because the oil system has to work its way up against gravity and against leaks further in the system and it may or may not be working I'm sure many of you will be familiar with felt wipers on machine tools. It's been used for many years. There's a lot to be said for felt. It uh, acts as a reservoir for oil. It wipes the slideways clean and it filters out any abrasive material and chips and so on. Um, so you can buy uh, felt of various thicknesses. I'm getting a bit low on it now. Um, that's about seven or eight millimeter thick felt and that's um, three or four millimeter thick felt 
and you can make up a little template out of a piece of paper or cardboard um, put a bit of pre-compression on the felt so that it's under tension on the slideway and um, cut yourself some felts uh, to fit in the critical areas and that is barring away blocking out chips and swarf and um, replacing it with a, an oil wet pad which is um, giving you a triple advantage there. Let's just have a look at it on the machine. I don't have a lot of time to do anything too elaborate but you can see there I've used the existing oil fitting and um, cut a bit of paper as a template around it cut the felt with a little bit of compression on it put a bit of sheet metal under the head of the fitting to clamp it all up and now I've got a barrier for chips a filter for abrasive particles and a reservoir for oil and the method of applying it to the critical sliding surfaces let's just look at it from another angle there you are so a bit uh, quick and rough and ready but it'll do the job in the meantime on the other side it's not quite as convenient I don't want to spend a lot of time on this at the moment so I've just put something together pretty temporary so there's a bit of felt there on the flat part of the slideway and I've just tucked in a piece of felt there on the dovetail part of the slideway behind the oil fitting and held out down that one with a piece of uh, sheet metal there where are we and underneath there just to hold it down if I get a chance in the future I'll make something a little bit uh, tidier than that but in the meantime at least I've got the felt in there because the uh, felt's got a pre-tension on the sliding surfaces um, you need to have a, a top strip of some sheet metal or something to stop the felt from peeling off when, it, when the head's going down and it keeps applying a reasonably even pressure and application of oil. So now when I apply oil to these surfaces it'll get captured by the felt also I get in there behind that where are we? and you can hear it rubbing over the screw there apply it to the screw. So if you're applying it to these top critical surfaces gravity is going to work in your favor here and it's going to work its way down the slides and the screw and wash the little metal particles with it to some extent and over time you should be able to clean the screw and the critical Z surfaces um, of debris and keep them well lubricated. It's really important and um, something we often forget about. So if you want to pick up a bit of felt, thick felt, um, I'm just having a bit of a look around to see where it's available. You can pick up thin felt from a craft supply store, but thick felt might be a little bit more difficult. You might have to go to an industrial supplier, so do a bit of googling in the area you're in. Um, in New Zealand it's felt supplies of New Zealand Limited industrial felt up to a thickness of 9.5 millimeters. Um, I've just had a piece that I've had in stock for about 20 years and um, I've got no idea where I would buy a replacement um, so uh, you just have to have a bit of a look around. So if you find a good source of thick felt that's readily available and reasonably priced please put a link in the comments under this YouTube video so other people can have a quick look down there and get that information. Thank you. So if you are concerned about some of the lower sliding surfaces or screws being too dry, uh, you, you could, uh, one idea you could, as a temporary measure, if you don't have a chance to fully recondition it immediately, would be to get a clean bristle brush, keep it stored in a plastic bag to keep it clean and free of grit and put a good dose of uh, whey oil on it and then get underneath there and uh, just spread it on to the screw and the dovetail sliding surface or wherever you're concerned about and just do that regularly until you get time
to overhaul the uh, oiler system properly. Please note I'm not saying here that you should disregard using your automatic or manual oiler. It's certainly important to keep doing that. This is just a supplementary additional insurance policy to, to manually apply oil in some of the critical areas, especially as the machine ages. If you don't have time to check and overhaul the oiling system, then um, this is a good supplementary process. I should do a bit of a shout out for these early Tormax. When I got this machine, the Series 1 machine in 2007, I set it up with the base in its neutral position that is not twisted at all. And I did a test to see whether the accuracy certificate that came with the machine was correct. And I was really surprised at how accurate that Tormac was. I checked it for squareness and parallelness and it was very good. It was better than most low cost milling machines. I was getting accuracies of, uh, of squareness and parallelness to a very high degree over quite long distances. And it was matching the accuracies of the test certificate. And so I thought, well, this, this is my most accurate mill. I really want to look after it. I want to keep it lubricated. I want to keep the gibbs well adjusted and um, try and maintain that accuracy of this well-built machine. So when I bought my more recent 1100 two or three years ago, I was hoping the quality would be just as good. And um, I had reason to completely dismantle it shortly after receiving it. And I was a little bit disappointed with some aspects of the quality. I think it had slipped a little bit in this particular example anyway. Of course, I'm not saying that um, that was a general slip with Tormac. Maybe just this particular, this particular example was a little bit downhill. So um, I don't want to be negative. I want to be positive here. It's just that us folk around the world that are using these Tormax are looking to the factory to do your best to keep that quality and that accuracy and um, to, so that we can take advantage of a very good design of these Tormax that uh, the original designers came up with some very good proportions and um, we, we really hope that you in the factory there in China do your best to keep that quality high even though the production numbers may be ramping up and the price point might be tough to make, try and keep that quality high for us and we really appreciate it. Cheers. That about wraps it up guys. Thanks for watching. <coughs>